Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name's Tia Rabala for those of you who don't know me and I share sewing and DIY content on this account. Today I'm gonna show you how I made this Valentine's Day dress recently. I'm gonna link it here as well. But before we get started, let's go over the necessary materials. To start with, you'll need your main fabric. I'm going to be using this yellow silk for the body of the dress and I got a yard and a half of it. Keep in mind, I'm making my dress today much shorter. I'm going to make it about mid thigh opposed to full length like this previous dress. If you're making a full length dress, I would recommend getting three yards depending on your size. Next, you'll need the accent pieces that'll be used for the bias tape that crisscrosses here. I got half a yard and had plenty left over from my last dress. If your fabric shop allows it, I'd get maybe an eighth of a yard or even a quarter of a yard, but most fabric shops don't allow anything less than half a yard. Next, you'll need a backing that will be used for the bra top. It is a backless dress, so this just adds to the support in the bra top. I'm using this light pink cotton that I had left over from my last dress. I would recommend getting it in the same color as the bulk fabric that you're using for the majority of the dress, but if you're using scraps, as long as it's a relatively light fabric, if you're using a light silk and a dark fabric, if you're using a dark silk, you should be just fine. And you only need half a yard for this. Next, you'll need fusible interfacing. You really only need half a yard for this, but it is relatively inexpensive and usually it's sold in three yard cuts. I got three yards for $5, so I'd recommend doing that. It's always good to have on hand. Obviously, you'll need thread. I'd recommend getting the three colors for the three colors of the dress you're working with, but if you wanna use one throughout, that's also fine. And finally, an invisible zipper that's the same color as the bulk color of your dress. I believe this is an eight inch invisible zipper. And optionally, you can use tissue paper. I'd really recommend using this because it helps keep your seams really clean and keeps your silk from getting stuck in the machine. It is optional, but it is a game changer whenever it comes to the finish of your dress. Also, after I made this DIY and posted it on TikTok, it was brought to my attention by one individual that there's a very similar dress that Beck and Bridge released a few years ago. And although I didn't know about it prior to making this dress, it is very similar. And I don't doubt that I was subconsciously influenced by it just from seeing it on Instagram or something a few years ago. So I am going to link that below because I wanna make sure there's credit where credit's due. The dress is no longer in production, so you're not able to purchase it, but I just wanted to give credit to them. All right, let's get started. To start with, we're going to cut all of our pattern pieces. I've linked a free printable PDF pattern below that I made, but I did make it based off of my size and the size of my mannequin. So please keep that in mind whenever you're cutting out your pieces. I'm new to grading. So for those of you who don't know, grading is basically making your pattern into several different sizes. So there might be a little bit of wiggle room. I'd recommend making it in muslin before you make it in your expensive fabric because it might not be exactly perfect um, like what you would expect. You might need to size down or size up. My apologies for that, but that is why the pattern is free. So please be patient while I learn with you. Also, I forgot to mention it before, but if this is your first time working with silk, I would highly recommend you check out my YouTube video sharing tips and tricks for working with silk. It is a very difficult fabric to work with, but if you follow these tricks, it makes it much easier and you'll save a lot of headache. Before we start sewing, I just wanna make sure we all have the right pattern pieces for the top part of the dress. So as listed in the PDF below, you'll need two cutouts of the fusible interfacing, two cutouts of the lining, and two cutouts of the silk outer. Now I'll take the two pieces of silk and the two pieces of fusible interfacing and you're going to iron them together. If you haven't worked with fusible interfacing before, you're going to take the textured side of the fusible interfacing. You can't see it that well on camera, but there's these dots and you can feel it whenever you have it in your hands and the non-shiny side of the silk. So make sure you don't iron it onto the silky pretty side. We're going to take it on the inner side of the fabric, the part that's not shiny, and the speckled side of the interfacing and iron those pieces together and just make sure the pattern lines up correctly. Now that I have the fusible interfacing ironed into each of the silk pieces, I'm going to add the bust darts to the bottom right here on the silk pieces as well as the lining pieces. And this is when the tissue paper will come in handy. As you can see, I'm cutting long strips of tissue paper that I'll place in between the sewing machine and the fabric. And what this does is it keeps the fabric from getting pulled into the bobbin and jamming the machine and also obviously ruining your stitch. So once you've finished the stitch, you just pull the tissue paper away and you'll be left with a clean finish. Then we're going to trim the excess that's left over from the dart and flip it right side out and press all of the seams. 
Now taking one piece of the lining and one piece of the silk, align them with the front facing sides facing each other. So as you can see, here's the outside of the dart and it's going to meet with the outside of this dart. So they're sandwiched together like this. Once you've aligned those pieces, pin along the edges and sew along the outside until you reach this piece down here. Great, so it should look something like this when you're done. Now I'm going to take one of the pieces and work on flipping it inside out. So basically just taking these two flaps, pushing a little bit through, and just working it along. And if you have any finicky corners that you didn't get out all the way, I would recommend taking a knitting needle and using the dull end of the needle and just pushing it through. You can use other objects as well, but just make sure it's nothing too sharp because you don't want to poke through the seam you just made. So now you can see we have one side and it's clean on the outside as well as the inside and it's sturdier than the silk fabric would be by itself. And just repeat that step with the other piece. So now that both pieces are flipped right side out, we're just going to wiggle this stitch as far out as possible, press that seam flat, flip the tail end inside of the garment, then add a top stitch around the border. All right, so as you can see, all of the edges are laying flat now, and I left this piece right here open. We'll come back to that at a later step. So now we can go ahead and set these two pieces aside. We're going to come back to them in a little bit, and now we're going to start working on the skirt. All right, so moving on to the skirt of the dress. As you can see, silk frays quite a bit, and a great way to elevate your designs is to hide that frayed edge on the interior of your garment. There are a few different types of seams you can use to do this, but my personal favorite is a French seam. For this, you'll need half inch seam allowance on all of the French seams. So as you probably know, for a simple seam, you would typically sew the two front facing sides together. But for a French seam, you're actually going to do the opposite. So you'll take the two non-shiny sides and have them facing each other and sew along that outer edge. So go ahead and repeat this step for all of the side seams and back seam of the skirt. But before you do the back seam, just make sure you mark how much space you'll need for the zipper. So for me, I left about six inches for the zipper and I'm just going to sew down that edge with about quarter inch seam allowance. So the next step with a French seam is to trim the excess that you have left over from the seam allowance. And then you can flip the seam out, press it flat, wiggle the stitch out to the edge and press it again. Then you're going to add a stitch along this edge and it'll basically encase all of the raw edges in a tube. Go ahead and flip the garment right side out and press all of your seams flat and you'll be left with a really nice finish for the outside and inside of your garment. Return to the back seam and snip this little flap so the stitch aligns with the zipper properly. Be careful not to cut through any of the stitches that you've made prior to this. Now taking the zipper, go ahead and unzip it, then flip it over so the back side is facing upward and iron the grooves flat. Be sure you're not ironing on a super high heat because you don't want to melt the zipper. This step is mainly just to reveal more space where we'll be adding the stitch. Repeat that on both sides and when you zip it up, it should look like this. Now taking the right side of the zipper and the right side of the silk, I'm going to sew it into place with half inch seam allowance. As you can see, I'm just pinning. And for this next step, I'm going to switch the zipper foot to a smaller one. I don't have a designated invisible zipper foot, but if you do have one of those, I would highly recommend using it. And as you can see, I'm just going to sew in this little ditch right along the line on the zipper. Once you have that complete, flip the garment inside out and repeat the same step on the other side of the zipper, keeping the seam allowance the same. Hopefully that description made sense, but if you need a more in-depth tutorial, I'm linking a video that'll help right here. So now that we have the zipper in, we're going to move on to adding the crisscross bias tape. And for that, you'll just need your second or second and third fabric. I've decided that I'm only going to use this color pink for the crisscross and I'm going to make it on both of the crosses. So I'm going to start by just cutting strips. And I didn't measure the last time that I made this, but I would say about an inch and a half to two inches long is plenty of fabric. Now taking the strip, take the two front facing sides of the top piece and the strip and face them together. You'll want to leave plenty of space at the top so it can wrap around your neck. So I'm kind of just eyeballing it, but yeah, that should be plenty. And then I'm going to pin it right there. Yeah, just pinning it along here. And I'm going to sew with about um, half an inch seam allowance away from the edge. 
So now that you have that sewn on, as you can see, it'll flip over and you'll tuck it behind the lining. And it'll look something like this whenever we add the top stitch. But before we do that, we need to connect the skirt. So I'm going to take the front piece of the skirt. So as you can see, this is the tip top where it sort of comes to a point. And this is the right side of the top. So I'm going to take the left side of the skirt and the right side of the top and sew those together just by continuing this strip down. Once you have that step complete, it should look like this and you're ready to move on to the other side. For the other side, you're basically just going to repeat the same steps, but whenever you get to the center piece right here, just make sure you don't sew over the previous flap. So as you can see here, I'm just folding and ironing about a quarter inch of the edge in and then I'm going to double fold and conceal that raw edge on the inside of the garment. And from this point, I'm just going to pin it and iron it again, then add a top stitch just under a quarter of an inch away from the edge, being sure to get all of the layers in the stitch. Now you'll need to finish the excess strip that will tie around your neck. To do that, fold the strip in half, iron it flat, then add a straight stitch a quarter inch from the folded edge. Be sure to stop sewing about half an inch short of the bodice piece, as you can see in the circle here. Trim the excess, then attach a safety pin to the end and work on maneuvering the strip right side out. Carefully push the safety pin through the opening, then maneuver the rest of the strap right side out. Press it flat, then add a top stitch to the opening to secure the strap. It should look something like this. Finally, for the back of the garment, fold, iron, and add a stitch, leaving enough space for a ribbon to pass through. Repeat this on both sides of the back. All right, now that that's done, you just lace up the back and then you're pretty much done. The final step is just to hem the bottom raw edge. Okay, so here's the finished dress. I'm really pleased with how it turned out, but I definitely prefer the longer version that I made for Valentine's Day. That being said, I think I'll get more use out of this one just because it's less formal. I know a lot of people mentioned on my TikTok that they were going to recreate the dress for their prom or other events. So if you do that, please share the photos. I would love to see what you guys make with this. And if you have any comments, you can comment below or reach out to me on my TikTok or Instagram. I'm a little bit better about replying there, but I'll be keeping an eye on these comments as well. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I would really appreciate the support as I'm getting this channel started. Thank you so much, and I wish you the best of luck with this tutorial.